This is a time when America was a little bit wild and untamed, particularly for women. The turning point for Joe, his sort of moral journey can, see, can be seen between the two women who are in his life. There's an Emma section. The first woman is exactly the type of woman a lot of people fall in love with when they're 19. Somebody who is cold and unavailable, and they believe that ultimately I can melt her heart. Ultimately, I will be her hero. There's a Graciela section. We will not be lovers. Time tends to remove that illusion, and also it tends also to make you go, I don't need to be a savior. Well, who's going to be saving me simultaneously? Nunca va otro. That becomes, in the second incarnation, it becomes Graciela. And that begins to awaken something in Joe. It's the Loretta section. Miss Loretta Figgis. I wanted to put something purely beautiful into Joe's life that had no sexual component. I had really committed actors that were really excited and wanted to do it. I was floored by how lucky I was. Oh, we do what we want to do. We'll go where we want to go. Sienna Miller just got this wonderful kind of Bonnie and Clyde quality. It's that wonderful, vibrant energy that she brings to it that, that makes it feel so alive. It's a real swank place. I think it's very clear from the offset that she is who she is, and she is a very strong, very no-nonsense, very unfazable, tough Irish lass. But also, she's somebody who's who's struggling because she's always sort of under somebody's foot. I have to see you know who on Saturday. Fuck you know. Yeah, that's the idea. She's a girl in, trying to navigate a world that is hard and dark and murderous and misogynistic. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world, and she's not going to be the one that gets eaten. I would back her in a fight any day. <laughs> <laughs> I think Emma represents the love that uh, is thoughtless and careless and irrational and doesn't care about uh, any of the consequences. I mean, she's been brought up in a world where there really isn't time to focus on love as a theory or a verb. It's just, it's a concept. And I think that she comes as close as she is able to loving somebody. And those feelings of vulnerability terrify her. She betrays Joe ultimately to protect herself and to save her own life. They could have run. And I think that her factoring in the need for her own protection means that she does lead him into a trap. It sort of breaks her heart to do it, but she's a very hard-hearted character living a tough life. But I also think she's just a little ruined thing, and she doesn't really have a choice in anything. It is surviving. Uh, I think it's a life with a lot of tough decisions like that. The most interesting about the end scene is that whatever Emma felt in her life, she feels no longer. Say what you have to say. I don't think she feels an awful lot of remorse. I think she just accepts that this was the, the hand that she was dealt, and she didn't have a choice, and she is who she is. And within that, finds some sense of peace and freedom. I'm free, Joseph. If you want to come by now, you got an open invitation. Zoe, she was just perfect for the part. It was like she was born to it. It just was perfect casting. She's fabulous in the movie. She fit the bill, and she's an amazing actress. We've met. My mistake, of course, we have met. Yes, we have. Graciela he was, becomes his love and his, his real deep, rich, you know, more fully evolved love relationship. They just have a conversation with their eyes. They have a very strong bond, and Joe, you know, falls in love. He falls very hard. There's something about how he identifies with us because he's from the other side of the tracks as well. They both think about how to be in the world, about what it means to make certain choices. My father tells Esteban and I, you cannot truly really live unless there is something for which you would die. Sounds like a good man. There's an integrity to how they are as people that I feel that Joe finds that very appealing. She's also somebody who's made compromises and had to give up some things to get what she wanted. He was ready to die for Emma, but I feel like she kind of set the standards of like, hey, choose better. Can I take your name? You want to get married? Regard yourself in a, in a higher way. Be wiser with the people that you choose to love. Graciela Coughlin. Best thing that ever happened to that name. Te gusta. 
Sí. She finally found somebody that loved her and respected her, so she was able to sort of surrender to love. But there's also a lot that she gave him. She taught him just the beauty of unconditional love. She's who really teaches him what it means to be a man. There has never been anyone like you in my life. One day I'm going to be good enough for you. In the short union that they have, they give each other so much strength and a reason to live, as opposed to a reason to die for. She's going to be a star in Hollywood. It's only a screen test, Daddy. Elle has this wonderful quality where she can be genuinely childlike and also be like a mature young woman. She's right on the cusp of sort of becoming a young woman herself, and she's got a tremendous reservoir of maturity, and yet she also has that lightness of spirit that children have. A screen agent came here and picked out a few girls. What struck me about it was that she was so young. She was thrust into these extremely adult situations. I think Loretta goes through a brutal experience. I think she had pretty serious depression and PTSD. Pleased to meet you, miss. As a girl, she has a sparkle. I mean, there's definitely a twinkle inside her. I think that she loses that sparkle and she loses that twinkle. And also the shame of it. Gossip definitely stirs around and, and everyone knows, oh, did you hear about Loretta? The sadness of feeling like she lost her childhood is, I think, so devastating to her because she wants to get that back. She wants to be a young girl again. Personal liberty is the liberty of a murderer. She finds strength in uh, religion as her uh, route to feeling good again after this horrible trauma. She becomes extremely religious. She went through her life a lot thinking that she didn't really have a purpose and, oh, maybe I'll do this preaching. I ask you, how cheap is your virtue? She finds that she can actually persuade people and they're gonna believe her. The things that she's talking about are really intense and at the end, Loretta finds her power. Why does my father hate you so much? Mm -hmm. I'm a crook. We see in the cafe scene the sort of realer side of Loretta. What did you do? We see her a little bit more uncertain. I think Loretta sees a good man inside of Joe, and she's not afraid of him. She's not afraid to say, well, these are my beliefs, and you know what, respect that. She's seen the worst of people and what we do to each other, and she's sort of been, been through what she thinks is the worst of it, so it changes her. We're all going to hell. That's big for her. Someone is finally seeing her, and she feels like she's seen for the first time in a way, even though maybe it's, I think it's too late, but, but still. Loretta Figgis cut her own throat yesterday. What? I think she kills herself because she can't get over the traumatic incident that happened to her. She didn't make it to uh, Hollywood. How her father reacted to it, how he makes her feel miserable. It's very complicated because even though he does beat her, I think that in a weird psychological way, she starts to think that she did something wrong and that her dad has the right to do that. That's really messed up, and I don't think she can take it anymore. I don't know if there is a God. There's so many different layers to this girl, because essentially she's just a little girl. This is heaven. Right here. <laughs>